In the last video clip, I spoke about stable and unstable equilibria and how the idea of unstable equilibria might apply to natural theology. I went through a very loose comparison of how natural theology is between religion and atheism. And the idea there is that if we are here, then that would put natural theology midway between religion and atheism. And that might be a good thing, because we might see these as two extremes where the truth is hard to maintain, and so people fall to one side or the other. Now, in this clip, I want to refer to a quote about Jesus to begin, but this is not only for Christians. We're going to universalize the, uh, this quote about Jesus, at least part of it. So I want to focus on the word truth. Now, in logic, we have propositions. Propositions are declarative sentences. Today is Friday, uh, 2 plus 2 is 4, but not questions like, what are we going to have for lunch? And truth is a property of propositions. Propositions are either true or false. With that definition of truth, it doesn't make much sense to say Jesus is the truth. But another definition of truth is that which is in accordance with reality or fact. So with this idea, suppose we have reality. Now for us, ultimate reality is uncreated light, ultimate ground of existence, undifferentiated being. But let's suppose the uncreated light can personify itself, can take the form of a person so as to communicate with human beings. Now this is a an interesting idea. And if this idea were true, then Jesus would just be a particular manifestation of the uncreated light, of Godhead. It's an idea that has some dangers. I won't get into it right now, but I th think that this idea could lead to some very far-fetched conclusions, if we took it too far. But I think it has some truth. And if we see Jesus as a manifestation of uncreated light, then when Christians are praying to Jesus, when they are speaking to Jesus, when they are, they feel they're communicating with Jesus, they might actually be communicating with the personification of reality. So that's an interesting idea, but then we come to have a problem. If any believer feels that they are in communion, they are in closer touch with reality, then you would expect them not to have false beliefs. For instance, you wouldn't expect them to believe that all human languages originated in the Tower of Babel, where, as we know, that didn't happen. You wouldn't expect them to believe that the earth is six to 10,000 years old. Now, what does that mean? Now, a, a most uh, pessimistic view would be that people aren't speaking to uh, what they think they are. They're not speaking to the spirit of truth, the spirit of reality, but some um, lying spirit. But I don't think that's right. I don't think lying spirits exist, but even if they did, I don't think that's right. I think a better interpretation is that they are seeing reality through the lens of their own particular scripture. And they're seeing it darkly. And that if they re removed that lens, they would see reality as it is, rather than making an idol of scripture and having to believe things like the talking serpent. Now, another point about natural theology is that without it, many people see that there's two uh, choices, religion or atheism. And maybe someone doubts the talking serpent or the worldwide flood, but they feel that if they reject that, they'd have to go to atheism, and maybe that's something they don't want to do. But natural theology gives us a third choice. You can keep your religious attitude. You can keep God, whereas that God is a manifestation of Godhead as ultimate ground of existence, and you need not make an idol of Scripture. And I think that's an uh, important point, is that you're given a third alternative. 
some brief pause. So we could see natural theology as a way to give up the false without entirely giving up on religion or the religious attitude. Now, if we see it that way, however, natural theology becomes kind of a temptation. It might lead away, it lead people away from their religion. Well, so be it. First of all, people can't be led away. It's their choice what they believe. And secondly, if you see being led away from your religion as negative, well, at least if someone turns to natural theology and they don't go all the way to atheism, at least it's a qualified negative. It's not as bad as it could be. So I think providing an alternative is, uh, is one of the virtues. To be able to give up primitive beliefs, stories that uh, don't seem to make sense in the modern world, but have a religion or a religious worldview that you can fully believe in is important. And of course, that is what I'm saying here, is that this is a third alternative. And it's something that I hope people become more aware of. Now, I should mention, just as an afterthought, that a lot of people have given up parts of their religious belief. There are Christians who say that the story of the Garden of Eden uh, and the eating of the apple is, 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 a, is a parable. It's not real. It's something meant to teach us something. But then there are consistency problems. For instance, if the fall never happened, what need was there for the atoning death of Jesus? Well, I won't get into that. Just to say again that I think that natural theology offers a third alternative, and I think if people were aware of it, many would choose it. Thank you.